Welcome back everybody, Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, today I want to talk about the downfall of Oakland and why Oakland is in such turmoil and the situation uh, where it is. And it comes down, comes down to something really simple, experience. And in this case, a lack of it. And we've had, um, let's see, I, I figured this up, 16 years. 16 years with people who have no experience in, in truly executive leadership, because uh, that's what it takes to uh, lead a city. And they, the city leaders that we've had uh, as of recent, it's mostly their ego is running the city, not so much um, them, because it, it was obvious Gene Kwan had no uh, control over anything and, and couldn't make a decision um, worthwhile. And, and that's what cost her her job because she was wishy-washy in her decision making. Then we have Libby Shaft. Libby Shaft, she was running on pure ego. Uh, she had no executive experience. She, she was a lawyer. Uh, so what do they know about running a business, operating a business? Uh, yeah, she came she uh, was on the school board for a while, just like Jean Kwan. And so that says something about you know, our, our screwed up school system too. Uh, and, and then they came to screw up Oakland. And now we have another, Oakland, you've, you've elected another inexperienced doofus who has not had any kind of executive leadership and, of any form, even if it was bad uh, leadership, it, at least it was something. They don't even have that. So uh, the learning curve, this is what we're experiencing and, and what we've experienced with the last three mayors, the long learning curve. Uh, Jean Kwan never got it. She never got her learning curve. That's why she was a one and done. Then we have Libby Schaff, who it took her... Uh, <laughs> in fact, she was another one that, that I would say really accomplished nothing. She ran completely on her ego. And um, after her first term, when she was reelected, she stopped talking to all of the major inputs which helped uh, Oakland. And then she even refused to listen to models uh, that would have uh, improve the quality of life for the city of Oakland. She refused to listen to projects which would have brought uh, interest and income to the city. A and she didn't do that. Uh, in the second half of her uh, um, tenure, um, she refused to, to meet with HOG, Homeless Advocacy Working Group. And we're the one of the most influential uh, groups here in Oakland working with the homeless on solutions. And, and then uh, we have solutions. We put together all sorts of things. And yet this administration refused to meet with uh, Hogg throughout her second term. That's why the homeless uh, situation skyrocketed. There were a lot of factors, but it skyrocketed. And, and she refused to listen to any of these uh, uh, models that would have made a difference a and we wouldn't have seen the skyrocketing uh, homeless uh, issue. We wouldn't have seen the crime issue because it, uh, along with the homeless issue, uh, there's also an embedded uh, criminal element that has to be uh, super watched. A and I'm not saying homeless people are criminals. I'm just saying criminals have learned to use cover and the cover that they're using is that of homeless camps. And so a lot of the homeless people know who they are. I had them in my camp and there was literally nothing I could do because the city of Oakland told me, since you're an encampment leader, you have to learn how to deal with this. You have to control these people. <laughs> I mean, it was insane. They, they were obfuscating 
all of their responsibility to someone else. That's what the Libby Shaft administration did. That's what Gene Kwan did. That's what Shang Tao is doing. And so nothing has changed. And until something majorly changes, nothing's going to change. And so here's the things that Oaklanders, you Oaklanders say, are the top priority for whoever takes over uh, for Shang Tao if the recall is successful. So the, one of the first things that they want to uh, address is homelessness here in the city of Oakland, which has been all over the board. And now, because of the situation uh, and uh, housing that's being given away, we're starting to see an influx of people not from Oakland, but from outlying cities uh, around the Bay Area who are coming into Oakland for uh, the uh, um, possibility of, of housing. And, and uh, along with that, a criminal element also follows them in uh, to Oakland. And, and that's why we're seeing a lot of the criminals who are not Oakland residents, but yet are getting arrested. And, and these are, are some of the, the reasons why. And so I've had uh, solutions for addressing the homeless uh, crisis for years. And it goes back to 2017. And in 2020, I even secured a 20 acre lot right here in East Oakland for the project to get homeless folks housed, permanently housed, not shelters, not temporary bullshit, but real housing, long-term real housing that is supervised. Number two, in terms of uh, the concerns for the city of Oakland, crime. I, I am probably one of the, the more controversial uh, mayor candidates because I advocate for concealed carry weapons permits to be issued to, to citizens of Oakland that wish to have them and that can qualify and meet the, the, the minimum requirements and, and the standard that I'm uh, talking about is the standard that I'm held to. And, for my concealed carry for federal firearms uh, licensees for concealed carry. And, and it, it took me a, a while. And I'm going to talk about what I went through to get that back in 1991. Uh, I've been carrying that long and I've had my license that long, but along with that license, there are other, a lot of other uh, things that come along with that benefit of being a federal firearms license concealed carry weapons uh, uh, person. Uh, so uh, I can carry my gun pretty much anywhere. And California laws do not apply to me because of my federal carry. I am a federally licensed, not a California licensee. There's a big difference. Uh, in California, uh, we're going to set some standards. I plan on setting some standards with uh, those that wish to uh, carry a weapon. We're not talking about uh, propagating more weapons on the street. We're talking about homeowners that are already uh, or Oakland uh, residents that are homeowners or renters who ha are in good standing with the law because there's going to be some major background check by uh, FBI. There will also be uh, um, a mental evaluation for uh, deciding whether you're a person who is mentally fit to carry, because that was one of the criteria that the federal government uses, mental fitness. And so, and, and that's a whole different area right there. And, and then there's the renewal process. Every fourth year, every fourth year, it is uh, required uh, to be renewed. So that means Everything that you de did to acquire your license to begin with, you have to go through again. And you have to pass with flying colors again. Plus, there's a shooting uh, uh, test, and it's not just a, a basic uh, see if you can hit the target at all. No, this is a uh, real stress test type uh, shooting. I shoot on the uh, FBI expert course. And I score 96% to 97% typically. And that 
And what the major difference is, is that instead of using a 25 yard range or a 50 yard range, we are, uh, we are required, required to hit targets 55 yards and moving. And so that's why I'm one of the, the, the uh, more skilled uh, concealed carry weapons uh, carriers. Uh, when I shoot at something, I'm going to hit it. I don't miss. If I do miss, it's not by much. Uh, and my second shot never misses. So uh, that's one of the things that, that a criteria that we're, we're looking at and that I want to bring uh, back to Oakland. This is going to drop crime because the criminals don't like uh, being shot at. You know, the fibs. Fuck, I'm being shot at. And uh, they don't like that. And so if we have the ability, you, Oakland citizen, have a uh, license for carry, that means that uh, you have the same safety that you have at home, out on the street, and you can protect your family. But there's a, a criteria. That's why the, um, the schooling, the education process, uh, which is going to take a little bit of time, uh, six months to a year, typically. And, and then, uh, like I said, you have to uh, prove that you can uh, hit uh, moving targets and targets uh, at 55 yards. So uh, along with that, there's also a requirement of martial arts. Uh, so uh, you're going to learn how to uh, keep your weapon. And uh, in the event that you, you get into a scuffle, that you have uh, the skills to defend yourself and retain your weapon in that event. And that's also part of a, a strategy for those that perhaps would like to become a community service officer. Uh, and along with the community service officer, in uh, my program, in my plan for the city of Oakland, there would be housing uh, for that, automatic uh, housing with a uh, qualified guard, armed guard card, and or a concealed weapons uh, permit. Uh, carrier and you are applying to be a community service officer and a community service officer can move up into uh, the Oakland Police Department because you're going to go through the exact same training that every one of the Oakland police officers go through, you're going to go through. So that addresses uh, crime. If there's any other portion of crime that you want me to talk about, Mention it in the comments and we'll address that. Number three, affordability. I have the only plan that creates affordable housing for everyone across the board. I have number one, the uh, uh, 20 acre property out near the Oakland Coliseum, which is the first uh, part of my uh, getting the actual homeless folks into real housing, real permanent housing with real homes. And the average price of the of home is between 80 and $85,000 complete, and it is move-in ready. Uh, but there are requirements for those uh, people that are going to reside there because uh, they have to put in sweat equity down payment. It's an old program that Alameda County used to have back in the 60s up through the early 70s until it was discontinued. But I'm going to revive that same program that allows them to uh, work uh, at least 100 hours towards their uh, down payment uh, requirements for living there. And it's not, not completely free. Uh, there there are, are programs that will help those that have no income, but uh, there's a lot of hoops to jump through on those. Then the number four, uh, the drug crisis. Well, Number one, we got, got to find a place to put uh, those that are um, having issues with drug addiction. Uh, a lot of the drug addiction uh, we do see in, in the uh, homeless encampments, uh, but we know for a fact, I know for a fact that uh, it is a coping tool for those that are homeless. So if we remove the homeless, uh, situation from folks. That will remedy a good 80 
to 82% of the drug addiction issues here in Oakland, and especially if housing is provided. So uh, that's one of the, the uh, things that we're going to be uh, providing for those uh, mostly on the uh, homeless issue, those that have drug addiction, addiction issues will uh, also be working one-on-one -on -one with, and, and this is kind of like a, a Rubik's Cube, and, and there's a lot of different uh, issues and, and challenges uh, along the way that we're going to face for the first time, <coughs> but we'll, hit, uh, we'll address those, <coughs> excuse me, head on as they come up. And this is a very flexible program. And uh, so it's not a single solution, it's a multitude of solutions. And then there's a continuum of care that goes along with this. And this is open for anybody and everybody. And the type of housing that I'm putting together on the 980 corridor rebuild, which is uh, part of uh, the plan two for housing, uh, in the downtown area that will provide up to 2,500 single family homes on 1,600 square foot lots. And again, uh, the, the homes are the micro homes that I've been talking about. You can go back uh, a couple of, of my videos, uh, either on YouTube or here on Facebook. And um, you can see what I'm talking about, arch cabins, the interior build out 640 square feet of interior volume for living space. And they are complete with kitchen, hot and, hot and cold running water, uh, HVAC, which is heating and air conditioning. These are highly, highly energy efficient. Also extremely fire resistant because the building, the uh, shell is uh, created with non-flammable materials. Even the insulation in the walls, non-flammable because we can uh, put uh, rock wool into the uh, wall for insulation which is a, a mineral based uh, insulation and it is not uh, flammable so that makes it uh, a 50-year building typical and highly energy efficient uh, the wiring it Pretty much everything in there is plug and play. And so it makes it very easy for the uh, resident to change the in uh, the footprint, uh, the layout, how walls are uh, uh, placed, how ceilings are, how all the electric uh, suddenly uh, works and doesn't work. And it, again, like I said, this is plug and play systems and which makes it very easy and very affordable. And so each uh, family that moves out, the family moving in has new opportunity to change the interior uh, as they would like. Uh, and so that's what makes the homes different than today. These are modular uh, interiors with an exterior uh, shell that is very, very uh, uh, efficient and uh, sustainable for, uh, for years and decades into the future. So um, also uh, we have with the illegal dumping. Uh, illegal dumping, uh, that's where community safety officers come into play because the community safety officers will know the hot zones and be able to patrol those. And we can set up a recording on those uh, type of uh, problem areas and address them directly. Uh, so there are solutions out there. And if going, moving forward into the future, make sure you ask about solutions. What are the candidate solutions? If you come to me and ask me, I have the answers for you. If you go to any other candidate who's going to run to replace Mayor Shang Tao, make sure you ask them, what's your plan for homelessness, dealing with the homeless. Number two, how are you going to be dealing with crime? Number three, affordability. How are you going to make uh, it affordable for me to live in Oakland and for businesses to, to thrive here in Oakland? I have that business plan, Oakland Middle Harbor Entertainment and Business District. And that's uh, that was for 
uh, plan number three. So plan number three has a lot of different uh, housing built into it all over Oakland and all affordable. So uh, again, like I said, challenge any candidate who's going to be running for a replacement Oakland mayor, what answers they have. Just that we don't, we don't want, well, I have to investigate that. No, they need to hit the ground running. Like if you elect me, I will be hitting the ground running and the first 100 days will be a complete change here in the city of Oakland. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.